you know what? I, I live now only to testify in the court in Nuremberg, and I hope that happens. You know, I'm going to keep going, I promise you. Yeah, I'll be honest, John, I think you're a few years too late for that now, but uh, still, good luck for you. Uh, anyway, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The man on screen is a Mr. John O'Looney, and he does cut quite the controversial figure on social media these days. Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Monday the 15th of May. Now, I've just been reading a really quite interesting study. And this is retired nurse Dr. John Campbell, another controversial public figure who now makes videos on YouTube where he underlines things. Now, because of his videos, John has become a bit of a celebrity and he's appeared on TV channels such as GB News, where they really seem to love and respect him. Keep up the amazing work because you talk about trust. Well, you are one of the very few incredibly well-respected, impartial and trusted experts when it comes to what we're still facing. Well, today we're going to examine this a little bit more deeply. and You can make your own mind up about John Campbell's content and how trustworthy an expert it may or may not be. And yeah, you've probably already guessed it. It is going to involve the most bizarre interaction between the two Johns you've just seen. But to begin this journey, for context, we need to dial the clock back, way back to the end of 2021, and visit a certain Mr. Stu Peters, a documentary producer who, how can we put it, doesn't let facts get in the way of telling a good story. This is him here. I'm going to tell everybody exactly where I am with this whole flat earth thing, because I just, I really don't know. But I do have a question about this. You, you mentioned the 1080 miles per hour. I asked a pilot to explain this because I asked a pilot, is it flat? And he looked at me like I was crazy. Uh, and he's, he, he goes, no, Mr. Peters, it's not flat. This was getting off. We were deplaning. And I said, well, let me just, let me just riddle me this then. Answer this question for me. So we're on this aircraft and we just went from Minneapolis to Orlando. We were traveling at approximately 500 miles per hour, give or take 50, 75 miles per hour. The Earth is spinning at 1,080 miles per hour, or so I've been told for my entire life. So how did we ever catch up to Orlando? Or did we just wait for it to catch back up to us? He couldn't really explain that. So this is Stu Peters displaying an amazing scientific ignorance as he ponders if the Earth could be flat. And he's also done the same thing on Twitter. Now, he is, of course, entitled to his belief, but I think it's fair to say that if somebody seriously thinks the Earth might be flat, then anything else they say that is related to fields of science, for example, should be taken with more than just a pinch of salt. But Stu Peters takes scientific ignorance to a whole new level. In late 2021, he was working on a documentary called Watch the Water, in which he claimed that COVID-19 was actually caused by snake venom in water supplies. And that along with the mRNA vaccines, this snake venom would make you a hybrid of Satan himself. And the evidence he provides for this? Well, how about an episode of The Blacklist? There's good news. The lab did find one distinct element in the molecular structure of the drops taken from Robert Dolly's apartment. A peptide unique to the venom of Gungaris flaviceps, also known as the red-headed krite. When I saw this, I knew, I knew I was right. I knew I was supposed to see that because it was confirmation to me that other people knew this was planned all along, right. which we've known this is a plan. Yes. The FBI figures out that it's actually peptides found in crate venom. Now, it really physically hurts me to tell you that this is far from the dumbest thing you will see people claim in this video. It's, uh, it's going to be one of those days. Anyway, Stu Peters didn't believe that COVID was snake venom for too long. Afterwards, he realised it was a virus. And then when he got a cold, he believed the government had given him the cold, wrapped up in some sort of weaponized attack. I wouldn't be surprised if this so-called cold, the virus, the flu that I have right now, was a targeted attack on me. Do you, do you speculate that some of that might be going on as well? A targeted attack? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, like the bioweapon being released on you, this, this sociopath yes. Tony Fauci, when he chimerically engineered this taxpayer-funded, uh, lab-originated, intentionally released Wuhan China virus, I mean, that could probably be used against people automatically. I mean, people, Republicans, conservatives, talk show host people being yeah. targeted with this virus, right? I mean, don't you think? So well, they can paint these, 100%. this picture. This picture. So I think it's more than fair to say that Stu Peters is a man who doesn't feel the need to have facts or the truth on his side before making ridiculous claims like that. And for just one more example, here he is talking to a woman who believes that we are living in a world based on the John Carpenter movie, They Live. So right now we are in a time where I would actually say people have been cloned and they are walking among us. If you watch the movie called They Live, They right. Live, L-I-V-E, it was created by John Carpenter. 
This is the world we live in right now. Some were human and some were other. So right. we're demons, and the human beings didn't realize that they were walking around with demons. Now, in 2022, Stu Peters released another documentary, a documentary which caused real panic among a lot of people. People who just weren't aware of his potential flat earth beliefs or the fact that he used to think snake venom in water was going to turn him into a hybrid of the devil. The name of the documentary, it will sound familiar to all of you, and it was called Died Suddenly. And in that documentary, Stu Peters showed a string of images of people fainting or becoming seriously ill, and he implied it was due to the vaccine. The problem was, however, that this was simply a lie. As the clips that he showed in the video, many of them were actually recorded pre-pandemic, before the vaccine was introduced. Here he is being pressed on that by a BBC reporter. Dante Johnson collapsed in December 2020 before the vaccines were available. He's still alive and well. He played in the National College Basketball Championship this year. Um, why did you include him in the film? Look, I gave this platform to God, okay? I'm on a very specific mission, and that is to expose lies that are killing people. Now, the lies that were told in the Died Suddenly documentary and the lies that were told by the Died Suddenly Twitter account have been exposed many, many times on the internet and they're very easy to find for anybody who wants to have a look. But unfortunately, one clip from that documentary did begin to gain a little bit of traction. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of hold it's on It's like to a it. rubber band almost. Yeah, like a rubber band or like calamari. So, of course, that explains people stroking out, like... In this clip, an embalmer is examining a post-mortem clot. These are very normal, usual occurrences, which I'll tell you more about later on in the video. But the documentary states that these clots are in fact new, never before seen, and only came about after the vaccine was rolled out. Now, obviously, this being a Stu Peters production, we know that everything has to be taken with a pinch of salt because he talks so much crap and he says so many nonsensical things. But for those people who are not familiar with Stu's background, this really might have looked quite convincing. For example, maybe this man here watched it. They're like calamari, they're like rubber. Hmm. Now, where have I heard that language before? They're like calamari, they're like rubber. Like a rubber band or like calamari. They're like calamari, they're like rubber. Like a rubber band or like calamari. Now, I really would be highly surprised if John hadn't watched the new Stu Peters documentary. Obviously, I don't know for sure. But still, judging by the things that John says on social media, he seems to be equally fantastical as Stu Peters in the claims he makes. For example, here he is talking about politicians and how the highest ranks politicians are literally not even human beings. Well, you, you, you know, you've said a few things in the last 20 minutes. And one of those is that it sounds like you came to the conclusion where well, you said the term they're not human because they have no humanity in them. But have you come to the conclusion that they're literally not human? I think um, at the very top of the the tier definitely i don't think they're human end and here he is echoing Stu peter's statement that the covid virus is a bioweapon but of all his claims this one is my favorite here he questions if vaccinated people will illuminate under an ultraviolet light and if so could we then shine a light on politicians to see if they've been vaccinated in this example, he goes biblical, agreeing that the vaccination is the mark of the beast, before telling us that the new Ghostbusters film shows the golden orbs of wisdom that fell from the tree of life, whatever that means. Now, anyone who follows John on Twitter will notice that it isn't unusual for him to post stories about unnamed people telling him weird stuff, such as this fantastic tale here, where he tells us that a surveyor just happened to tell him that every single farm in the country is going to be closed down. And he is very specific. He means every single one. Now, in my opinion, I'd say either this simply didn't happen or it did, but John was just being too gullible to realize that somebody was just taking the piss out of him. You see, John has a long history of being associated with conspiracy theories. Back at the start of the pandemic, he was in the news as somebody who believed that COVID didn't exist. He thought it was just the common cold, but then he caught it and he ended up in ICU. So let's sum up. Who would platform a man like this? A man who believed COVID didn't exist. A man who wonders if a torch could be used to see if politicians are vaccinated. A man who believes that top politicians are literally not human and believes that COVID is a bioweapon. A man who's suggesting that every single farm in the country might be shut down. Who would take this man and put them onto their channel as a serious guest to listen to them talk? Well, I know I wouldn't, but then again, I am not Dr. John Campbell. Well, welcome to this talk, and it's really quite an important one, and I'm delighted to welcome Mr. John O'Looney from 
the funeral director from Milton Keynes. Now, make no mistake about it, at this point in time, Dr. John Campbell is very much a public figure. He's got an audience of over 3 million subscribers, his videos get viewed over 5.5 million times a month, and people do look to his updates for advice, or as he puts it, evidence-based content. Now, I analyse, or try to analyse, everything they say in context of underpinning physiology and underpinning principles, and in terms of the data, the evidence. In fact, Follow the evidence is now a catchphrase that is uh, pretty firmly associated with John, I think. So given the size of John Campbell's platform, is it really responsible to be platforming people like John O'Looney who seem to say such fantastical things? Or is this just an indication of the level of research John does on his guests? You see, I've questioned John's ability to follow the evidence for some time now. This here is Hugh Ross, an old earth creationist. He's somebody who doesn't follow the science. By definition of being a creationist, he invokes the supernatural to explain the world around him. He believes that natural selection might take animals so far before then a divine intervention results in the creation of a whole load of new species who are then given their own time on Earth by God. Um, so, so you've got these uh, three broad epochs where there's large stasis in between but very rapid changes when, the, when they're extinct and they come back in different forms. Exactly. Okay. And so uh, from a Christian perspective, uh, this is powerful evidence in favor of a creation model and against any kind of atheistic evolutionary model because here are these creatures not changing for tens of millions of years, then they're wiped out and they're replaced with creatures that are radically different in a very short period of time. Now scrolling down the comments section of this video, what do we see? Well, we see Dr. John Campbell thanking the creationist, thanking the man who utilizes supernatural explanations to explain the world around him, thanking him for clearing his mind of pseudoscience. Now, there's no doubt that this is a real John Campbell because when you click on his icon, it takes you straight to John's channel. It has to be John. Now, I'm not saying that this means John is a creationist himself, but it is really concerning to me that he will credit a creationist for helping him understand science. That really concerns me, especially with the size of his platform and the number of people who want to learn from him. But anyway, where were we? Now, I want to be able to take arguments for and against. Absolutely. I want to be able to analyse that, and I want to come to my own conclusions, thank you very much. And I want my peer, I want peer reviews, mm -hmm. and I want the best scientists and the best doctors we have, and we have some brilliant scientists and doctors in this country. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the best scientists and doctors. And I'm delighted to welcome Mr John O'Looney from the funeral director from Milton Keynes. Now, we started talking because we've got a, a mutual concern about these white fibrous clots that are, that are coming out of the circulatory system of uh, many deceased uh, individuals. And of course, it feels like this question was always going to be inevitable in this video. Now, um, have you any way of knowing that the white thrombi that you're seeing in the patients that are dying at the moment, um, do we know anything about their COVID status, their vaccination status? Is there anything that would... Every one of them that I've spoken to has been vaccinated. Now let's get this out of the way. Everything they describe here, rubbery clots, etc., taking the shape of the blood vessels, is all normal post-mortem clots. Here's an image of one from 2018, which obviously was pre-pandemic and pre-vaccine. You see, these clots just simply are not new or undocumented. The frequency did increase during the pandemic, leading to studies on the topic, including this one here. And you'll notice the date of this study, again, was before any vaccine was rolled out. We can look at this article here, talking again about an increase in clots, well before the vaccine was rolled out. Now, one possible cause for the increase in these clots is that for several reasons during the pandemic, bodies were obviously left for longer before post-mortems could be carried out, and that is inevitably going to lead to the formation of more clots. But one thing is clear, they are not new, they're not a mystery, they never were a mystery, and they didn't begin after the vaccine. Just remember where this ridiculous rumour come from. I'm not going to tell everybody exactly where I am with this whole flat earth thing because I just, I really don't know. Now, back to the interview, and it is just truly bizarre. For example, we get to hear John O'Looney's views on the first COVID wave, where he suggests that the peak of deaths wasn't caused by COVID, but was rather down to deaths in care homes because of the increase of a drug called midazolam. Going back to 2020, um, what... Did you notice about the pattern of deaths in 2020? And, and what's your thinking on 
the amount of people that actually died from COVID in, in 2020. Mm. Well, where uh, were most of your bodies coming from in 2020? So, so there were no more deaths in 2020 than any other year, John. There was a brief blip in March and April for about three weeks. And this was at exactly the same time they used up to a thousand percent more midazolam. This is the cause, I believe, of the first, we were told, the first wave. And was this, of course, some... is exactly what you see when you look at the graph of excess mortality from our world yeah. in data. Of the course. Peak, the, you know, in 2020, it's low, then you've got this massive peak, very short-lived, and then it goes down again. Yes. And, of course, we've been told that this was caused by the Wuhan wave. No, it wasn't the Wuhan wave. I was going exclusively to care homes. Yep. This was exclusively where they were putting the elderly. Uh, and, you know, if they say to you a, a virus is out there, it's out there in the public domain. It would be yep. hitting everywhere. Why was it exclusively care homes? Because that's where they were exclusively using up to a thousand percent more midazolam. Now, midazolam is a drug that's used to make somebody sleepy, relieve anxiety, and it is used in end of life care to make somebody's final hours more peaceful. But it isn't a poison. It doesn't kill. But here, John O'Looney is making very, very precise claims. Claims that require evidence. A 1,000% increase in the use of midazolam in care homes. Because that's where they were exclusively using up to 1,000% more midazolam. So bearing in mind the size of the platform he's on, bearing in mind that John Campbell's catchphrase is to follow the evidence, what is his evidence for this very specific 1,000% increase? Have you got any evidence of the fact that they're using midazolam, John? I've seen the vials, or I saw the vials, on the sides and discarded in bins where they hadn't cleared up properly. Oh, that's right, yeah. John O'Looney, the man who thinks that top politicians are not human and wondered if the vaccinated people illuminate, he has seen some empty vials. And just a reminder, this video so far has been seen by 1.5 million people. Anyway, these seemingly random statistics from John don't end there. What kind of, of, the, of, the, of the bodies that you are embalming, what sort of frequency are we talking about i would say around a quarter um of the bodies 25 um, percent yeah around 25 percent overall okay so he claims one in four here but later on in the interview that is no longer the claim the claim is actually that he's not seeing many at all these days it's fact just the uh, the odd few but the reasons why that might be according to john are going to blow your mind he goes on to imply here that the bodies are being cleaned up in his words, before they arrive at him. And I can only assume he's literally claiming here that clots are being removed from bodies before the bodies arrive to him. And for some reason, he can't prove it, even though you would imagine it would be obvious to anybody that you're looking at a body that has previously been cut open and had the clots removed. Yep. Well, I'm just, uh, what's going on in our country now is just incredible. 2020, 2021, you started seeing these. Would you say they got more, more towards 2022, 2023? Were you seeing more? Well, I'm seeing less now, although I'm seeing more deaths. And the reason I suspect that is because the coroners, they know that I've been very vocal. And yeah. one of the questions they ask families is which funeral director are you using? So I kind of wonder if um, they, they then tell the coroner and I suspect the bodies are probably being cleaned up a little bit before they're released to me that's my suspicion I've got no way of proving that but I'm not finding as many clots as I did although uh, in the last two weeks I found two full of them now John Campbell is listening here and engaging seriously again with a man who thought Covid didn't exist who thinks top politicians are not human and wonders if a UV torch can be used to see the vaccination status of politicians but does John give equal credence to other people people who are far more qualified to comment on these clots. Well, he certainly doesn't in this Twitter interaction here. Despite being told by numerous medical professionals and people who've actually carried out autopsies in the past, well before COVID, that these are indeed just normal post-mortem clots, as I showed earlier, John is adamant that this is a new pathology. Why? Well, because reasons, I guess. And John O'Looney seems to have the same attitude. Here we hear him recount an actual discussion with a real pathologist, not a funeral director, but a, a real pathologist who assures John that these again are normal clots. But again, for reasons, John just isn't having any of it. The pathologist wasn't concerned, um, asked me to dispose uh, of the samples and actually suggested that it grows inside people regularly post-mortem. But you know, I, it doesn't, you know it doesn't. So that's that then. The man who is telling us that every farm in the country is going to be shut down and that non-human entities run the country. He knows more about pathology than the pathologist and uh, this really does seem to be enough for John Campbell. Well, what gets me about this is this is a completely new pathology. Normally, doctors and young researchers are saying, oh, ooh, ooh, a new idea, and they try to compete with each other to get into the literature first. 
But here, a completely new pathology is, is, be, is being discovered by, by, by people like yourself. What is more likely? Is it more likely that an mRNA vaccine somehow, by some totally unknown, unscientific, unexplainable mechanism, results in the growth of enormous clots, yet no actual pathologist seems to notice it's happening, no pathologist seems to care, and the pathologists who are told just get really confused and kind of imagine that that's always happened because of reasons. And the only people who can figure out that this is going on are people that think COVID is snake venom designed to turn us into Satan, or funeral directors who think the vaccinate might possibly illuminate under UV light. Is that more likely? Or is it B? That like everybody keeps saying, these are post-mortem clots that have always existed. And perhaps it's a good idea to offer your platform, John, to people who make less fantastical claims about things. Now, I'll let you make your own minds up, but for me, this interview was a wreck from start to finish. And also, I think, highly irresponsible. Highly irresponsible to platform somebody who either A, you've done zero research on, or B, you have researched them, and yet you still present them as some kind of authority while not mentioning any of their previous crazy theories. Now, I want to be able to take arguments for and against. Absolutely. I want to be able to analyse that, and I want to come to my own conclusions, thank you very much. And that's fantastic, but you're not going to help your viewers with interviews like this. Well, you bring somebody on who's made so many ridiculous claims in the past, and yet none of those claims are mentioned. None of those claims are brought up to allow your audience to actually evaluate what they're hearing from this individual. Now, maybe you didn't know about the crazy things he said in the past, in which case you need to research your guests more thoroughly. Or maybe you did know, which would be really, really concerning. I'd really like to believe it's the former, John, and I look forward to you doing a whole lot better in the future.